Hello, my name is Milena Vujosevic Janicic and I work as a compiler tech lead in a company named Sirmia. I also work as a professor at the Department of Computer Science at the Faculty of Mathematics, University of Belgrade. Today I'm going to talk about the project I have been working on for the last two years within Sirmia. It is about extending Clang for checking compliance with automotive coding standards. Let me first give you a short overview of the talk. I will start with AutoSARP guidelines to explain the problem and the objectives of our work. I will continue by taking a look at possibilities offered by Clang and by analyzing their strengths and weaknesses in this area. Then I will discuss implementation details of the AutoCheck tool that we implemented as an extension of Clank. Finally, I will give some conclusions and say something about our plans for future work. AutoSAR guidelines for the use of the C14 language in critical and safety related systems propose rules that are tailored to improve security, safety, and quality of software. These rules are primarily aimed at the automotive industry but can be used in other embedded application sectors. There are 402 rules within these guidelines. One half of them are derived or based on the existing C++ standards. Then around 150 rules are adopted without modifications from uh, one other important safety related standard called MISRA C++ that dates from 2008. Finally, about 60 rules are based on research papers and other literature. These rules can be classified using different criteria. Some rules are required while some are advisory. Also, according to allocated target, some rules target implementation of the project code, while some target verification process, tool chains used within the project and the overall infrastructure. If we consider enforcement by static code analysis tools, rules can be automated, partially automated or non-automated. Automated rules can be enforced by static analysis tools. Partially automated rules can be enforced by static analysis tools only to some level and are used as a support for some additional processes like for manual code review. For non-automated rules, the static analysis cannot provide any reasonable support. Uh, we focus on implementation-based rules that can be automated and that are either required or advisory. There are 340 such rules. Let us take a look at some examples of such rules. Some rules are very simple in terms that are both easily formulated, easily remembered, and even easily implemented. One such rule is triggers shall not be used. And this is a rule that is already implemented within Clank. Another simple rule is literal suffixes shall be uppercase. Then there are rules that are not so simple in terms that are not simple to understand and are also not so easily implemented. But it is important to note, can be implemented. Examples are uh, different identifiers shall be typographically unambiguous and the continuous statement shall only be used within a well-formed for loop. These rules contain additional definitions about typographical similarity and about well-formed loops that should be first understood correctly and then learned by a programmer. And for such rules, it is particularly important to obtain the support from static analysis tools. Finally, there are some undecidable rules that are describing runtime features of the code like a project shall not contain unreachable code and there will be no division by zero. 
Such rules can be only partially implemented, covering some specific scenarios, like it is done within Clank, or can be implemented in a way that introduces some false alarms. As being undecidable, it is not possible to write a precise algorithm that would have no missed bugs nor false alarms. Therefore, uh, we have a big number of rules that should be implemented, 340. There are big differences between these rules. Some are easy to check and some, uh, some are very complex, while some are even not decidable making us to think about how to handle such rules concerning false alarms and undiscovered violations. The existing support it includes Clank, uh, as some rules are already implemented within Clank. It also includes two interfaces to the Clank's abstract syntax tree, namely visitors and matches. Then there are two important tools. The tool Clunk ID is a framework that offers elegant usage of uh, Clunk's matches. And the Clunk Static Analyzer is a framework that offers more precise analysis that includes exploded control flow graphs of programs. We carefully considered all these possibilities. So, we have several objectives. Uh, with no, with equal, let's say, equal importance. Uh, first objective is to have no undiscovered violations, as that is necessary to conform to the AUTSAR standard. Uh, another uh, objective is to have as precise as possible analysis as users, in this context, programmers do not like to cope with false alarms. A uh, third objective is to have efficient analysis, as efficiency is also very important to users. Fourth is to make it user-friendly and easy to use. Not a new tool, but a part of an existing tool that users are already familiar with. While the issued warnings should be like compiler warnings, but with additional control over reporting mechanisms. Finally, the last objective is to follow good design principles that will give us a solution that is easy to maintain and easy to verify. Now, let us take a look at the support already existing within Clank. There are 44 rules that are supported or partially supported by Clank. At the starting point of the project, we thought that 31 rules are already completely supported by Clank. And we were aware of only 13 rules that are partially supported. However, it turned out that there are additional partition, partially supported rules among these 31 that we thought were completely supported by Clank. An example of a, of a supported rule is already mentioned rules triggers shall not be used. And only such simple rules are actually supported within Clunk. Concerning examples of partially supported rules, one is the form of delete operator shall match the form of new operator used to allocate, it, uh, to allocate the memory. Um, while some cases are implemented within Clang, we discovered some additional important cases that are not covered and that we had uh, to additionally support. And finally, the mentioned division by zero uh, rule uh, is a kind of rule that there are only some very simple scenarios that are predicted within the existing support. Um, it is possible to directly improve Clunk's diagnostic uh, by adding support for some simple rules whenever that is appropriate. 
Uh, appropriate in this context means whenever that does not affect client's efficiency and whenever it is easy to maintain the extended code between different versions of Clang. Of course, we keep Clang's behavior unchanged unless our flags are present. Concerning adding support for some more complicated rules, there are two interfaces for semantic analysis within Clang, matchers and visitors. Matchers provide a simple, powerful, and concise way to describe specific patterns in the abstract syntax tree. In addition, there is a Clang tidy tool that gives a valuable framework for writing code style checks exactly with matchers. Visitors provide access to the full power of the Clang's abstract syntax tree. There are different strengths and weaknesses of these two approaches. Matchers should be easier to implement and maintain, but do not always give you a full control over the abstract syntax tree. Uh, in addition, we decided to also analyze efficiency aspects of these two approaches. But we will first take a look at some examples of matchers and visitors. So let us consider the following simple example. The AutoSAR rule functions shall not be defined using the ellipsis notation. This is a very simple rule that can be that can demonstrate the power of matchers. Here on this slide, we have a short piece of code corresponding to a variadic function and a part of its abstract syntax tree. For this simple example, both the visitor and the matcher are very simple. Uh, I should also mention that there is some additional code that should be written in both cases, but for example, Clang Tidy simplifies that part for writing matchers. So, in this example, you can see that visitors correspond to a kind of imperative style of programming, while matchers correspond to a kind of declarative style of programming. However, it is not always the case that matchers are a more natural choice. For example, for a rule, a function shall have a single point of exit at the end of, of the function, it is important to have only one return statement within a function. This is naturally done with visitors by increasing and checking the number corresponding to a return counter. However, for writing a matcher, it is necessary to check if there exists one return statement and there exists another return statement that is not equal to the first one. Similarly to the previous example, the presented approach with matchers becomes tiresome when it is necessary to count. For example, let us consider the rule a switch statement should have at least two clause, case clauses distinct from the default label. In this example, the matcher should match one case clause, then another case clause that is different to the first one, and the third case clause that is different to the first one and the second one and that corresponds to the default one and so on if you should count to more than two. In addition, matchers do not naturally solve the problems concerning the order of statements that is important in some rules, like in a rule the go-to statement shall jump to a label declared later in the same function body. Things get especially complicated when the order gets important within some sub-goal of a rule. Finally, there are also some other examples where solutions with matchers get complicated, like writing a matcher for some recursively defined rule, showing that matchers are not always the best choice. Concerning efficiency, we perform different measurements in order to assess the efficiency issues. We wrote several matchers and visitors checking the same properties. We also generated code with the different, different codes with different structures. A code that contains only the expected structure that is checked by visitor or matcher, a code that does not contain any of the expected structure that is checked and a code that contains approximately 5% of code with the expected structure. 
We generated such code, uh, codes of different sizes, from 100 lines of code to 10,000 lines of code. And we measured the efficiency of matches and visitors on that code. We measured uh, it for 100 times and took the average. We also measured the efficiency on automotive grade Linux open source code. Automotive Grade Linux is an open source uh, project that can serve as de facto industry standard to enable rapid development of new features and technologies. Uh, and technologies. Um, automotive Grade Linux contains a code base with a huge number of sub-projects and we use several sub-projects as testing benchmarks. The results show that there are no big differences between different sizes of code and between different checks. The results also show that visitors are as fast as matchers or in some cases faster. The biggest difference in efficiency is when the code contains only the expected structure that is checked. And in such cases, visitors are from three to five times faster. On automotive grade Linux code, visitors had between two and three times better efficiency. Having in mind that there should be many checks, 340 rules, and not only one like it is here, these differences are important, so we chose to use visitors in our implementation. A static analyzer is a source code analysis tool for finding bugs. It can take into account the control flow graph and not only abstract syntax tree. More precisely, it uses an exploded graph which corresponds to bounded model checking where loops are considered with just a few loop unrollings. It should not report false positive results, but can have false negatives. As our objective is not to have false negatives, we have to use it very carefully and we have to adapt this feature where it is possible. Also, Static Analyzer aims at precise analysis and, um, and it is much slower compared to visitors and compilations. Um, we have implemented uh, 190 rules from AutoSAR C14 guidelines uh, into a tool that we call AutoCheck. Some of the implemented rules, there are 120 such rules, are language independent or can be used on C code as well. Some rules are implemented directly within Clang, and there are 80 such rules. Others are implemented through visitors. It is interesting to note that visitors are grouped uh, into clusters that maximize the efficiency of the tool. Having many small visitors make the analysis slow, as the abstract syntax tree should be traversed many times. On the other hand, having one huge visitor uh, that visits everything also makes analysis slow as there are many unnecessary checks that are done during that, that visit. Therefore, visitors are grouped within clusters based on the nodes that they are supposed to visit. Four rules are additionally supported by more precise analysis through st static analyzer. AutoCheck uses LVM's infrastructure for testing. Each implemented rule is covered with several positive and negative test cases, which can also be used as a documentation of how the AutoSAR guidelines should be followed. We also use automotive gray Linux code as testing benchmarks. AutoCheck is used internally within Sirmia on projects that require compliance with AutoSAR guidelines. We get the feedback from software developers and use this feedback for guiding the development of the tool. AutoCheck is an extension of Clang, so plugins for Clang's integration within different software development environments can be used. There are several new options that differ to standard Clang options that we added based on the needs of our users. First option is to limit the number of warnings issued for each violated rule. This option is not only about the way the results are presented. 
In addition, it stops performing the analysis for each rule after its limit is reached, which makes the overall analysis much faster with this option. For example, this option is useful when you want to check how many different rules and which rules are violated within some code base. Uh, another useful option enables the programmer to get the warnings and to analyze only some specific portion of code, a part of code that he or she is working on at that moment. Uh, concerning efficiency that we set as one of our important objectives, we measure it on different corpora. Automotive grade Linux um, open source code contains a big code base from which we use several sub projects, as I already mentioned. And when building these sub projects, if only options that are implemented within Clang are included, then the time that auto check takes is bigger between 1.1 and 1.7 times compared to Clank. If all visitors are also included, the time that auto check takes is bigger between 1.7 and 9.2 times compared to Clank. These differences depend on number of violated rules and on the number of times the rule is violated. The option that sets limits into analysis and the option that excludes headers from the analysis reduce significantly these time differences. As an illustration, take a look at the following examples. In these two files, there are 11 different rules that are violated. However, in the first file, these 11 rules are violated 15,000 times if headers are included in the analysis, and only 3,000 times if headers are not included. In the second file, we again have big differences concerning performing the analysis with or without the header files, while in both cases, if leave with option is included, the number of violated rules is only 11. Clang is, of course, not written according to AUTOSAR guidelines, but it might be interesting to take a look at uh, these results. There are 129 rules that are violated within Clang's code base, and most of the rules are violated a huge number of times. Here you can see the warning that is issued the uh, biggest number of times. Before we conclude, let us make a short comparison of Clang Tidy and our AutoCheck tool. Clang Tidy is framework for writing code style checks. It is a C++ linter tool which gives support for different coding conventions and an interface for adding new checks. On the other hand, AutoCheck is a custom tailored solution which gives support only for C++14 AutoSAR guidelines, which contain rules that can be much more complex than coding conventions are. Clang Tidy is a libtooling based tool which uses abstract syntax tree matchers, while, <clears throat> while AutoCheck can be invoked as a Clang option and is based on Clang and Clang's visitors. Both Clang Tidy and AutoCheck can run and use a static analyzer. Now, let me conclude this talk. As we have seen, LVM and Clang give different interfaces and frameworks for implementing syntax and semantic analysis. The best choice is the one that fits the best into goals and objectives of the projects. We had many different decisions to make on our road and very and uh, that were explained and commented during this talk. We have successfully implemented 190 rules from AutoSAR guidelines, taking care of efficiency and preciseness. We also implemented different options, controlling the output in the user-friendly way. As our further work, we are planning to implement the rest of the rules. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Um, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions now or maybe later, please feel free to contact us. Hi, everyone.
everyone. Uh, I'm Georgi Tudorovic. I will be your moderator today. This is Milena Vyoshevic-Janicic. Uh, thank you, Milena, for such a nice talk. And uh, uh, thank you all, all for attending. And uh, this Q&A uh, is going live, so please feel free to ask any question through the Volvo application. And we'll try to uh, answer them all uh, during the presentation or after. So, yeah, let's start. Uh, first question. Uh, are you considering upstreaming any of the checks or diagnostic improvements if they are general enough? And uh, is your extension available for other projects that follow the OUTSAR guidelines? Uh, thank you, Georgie, for this introduction and thank you uh, for this question. Um, there are some checks that are general and that can be useful in a broader scope than only within OUTSAR. And we are still in the middle of the project and we are planning to develop it further. So this is still an open question even for us. Uh, however, if there is an interest from the community, we'll be glad to share further our experience and our code. We are also open to collaborate on this project to discuss it. So everything is still open. Okay, thanks. So one similar question, will this be able as a product, either commercial or open source one? Well, as I already said, uh, it is still an open question. I uh, hope it will be available soon. Okay, thank you. So, next question. Uh, is it possible to get false positive results from the auto check tool? Okay, this is one very important question when you use any kind of uh, static analysis tools. And for example, yesterday on roundtable for static analyzer, this question was also discussed. And uh, having false negative, false positive results is something that discourages users and something that programmers do not like to see. Uh, however, we are here, here talking about AutoSAR guidelines and you have to have a code that completely follow these guidelines. So having false negatives is something that um, is also very important not to have and uh, it, that is something that must not happen. So you have to live with it that some some false positive results uh, can happen and will happen. However, uh, at this moment, we do not have uh, many rules that can have false positive results. And in these rules, uh, we have a classification that says, okay, this is for sure a violation and this uh, can be a violation of the rules. So, uh, so that the user can be uh, more or less sure about the output given uh, from out the check. Okay, yeah, nice. Uh, so how would you describe the usage of out the check? Oh, thank you for this question. That is something that I maybe did not um, did not say during the, my presentation. Actually, auto check is an extension of Clang, so you can use Clang um, uh, as um, in a common line or within some uh, software development environment. So the auto check you can use in the same way as you use Clang. Uh, so um, actually, auto check is. Um, uh, one set of options, all with the prefix auto check that you can uh, that you can use, and uh, you can use them one by one, rule per rule, or you can use them all together. Or there are some groups according to the AutoSAR guidelines, so that you can um, you can um, use uh, this group of turn on a group of rules in one moment. And then there are also these meta options that are making it more user friendly so you can uh, combine everything uh, together. Okay, yeah, thanks, nice. So next question, uh, how to uh, handle situations when the number of warnings is big? Okay, this is something similar to false uh, false positives, also something that uh, if a programmer gets too many uh, warnings, even if they are all true, um, 
it is something that discourages a programmer to continue uh, in to improve the to improve the um, the quality of the code. So um, there are several options that can be used to avoid such situations. First option is one that I mentioned is uh, to have limits. So if you start on a project uh, that you f that you check for the first time, maybe the best thing is to um, put a limit to one so that each rule is um, reported only once and then to get the information about um, about the rules that are violated then you can uh, only about the rules that are violated and then you will not have so such a big number then you can go further and uh, fix one rule by another one one by one and uh, then there is also one important option within auto check that lets you uh, specify the part of code that you want to check so if you are interested only in your part that you are developing then you can say i want just warnings for this part of code and then you will not get uh, the whole file i mean the warnings for the whole file but just for your part of code and then you cannot have a huge number of warnings okay nice thank you so next question do you find that automotive customers require a formal report in a specific format? Uh, this is something that, that when you have uh, to follow strictly out of our guidelines is uh, probably very important. We are still just developing this and it is something that will uh, be considered on some, uh, on some next stage. Uh, Okay, thank you. So the next question, uh, apart from performance, is there any other reason why everything would not be implemented in Clank Tidy? Uh, well, um, uh, Clank Tidy is a great tool, great interface, and um, it is um, it gives support, but mainly for uh, code style checks. And here we have much more complicated rules and the trunk tidy is maybe not the best choice for implementation of uh, such rules. So that is one, one of the important reasons. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, next question. So, yeah. Uh, what is the feedback you got from uh, your users so far? Uh, well, uh, we used the feedback that we got from our users uh, to guide our development. And these options that we have actually are a result uh, of the feedback that we got from the users so that we can make it uh, user friendly for our users. Um, it is uh, we are in development process and uh, lately we have really, uh, really good feedback and they are very uh, satisfied uh, with how AutoCheck works. And yeah, I will go back, one step back for the last question, um, for the previous question. Uh, one also reason that we wanted to make it uh, as an extension of client and not within another tool either client tidy or some other tool is that there are many tools around and uh, programmers are usually uh, not feeling very comfortable to take another uh, new tool to use and then if you have something that they must use and that they do use their compiler then it's much easier to give them just a few new options uh, and uh, in that way, they can easily incorporate that in the everyday process. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, last question. How much time did you spend on time uh, on the implementation and how much time per rule? And what would you improve in Clang to make it easier? Okay, how much time did you spend on the implementation? That's a very tricky question because um, there are some very, uh, let's say, something that you can do in one day, some rule, and then you have um, 
and then you have some rules that are very difficult to understand to implement that you have uh, to think about the algorithm to think about many things uh, how to do so um, I, I would say it, it very much depends uh, on the rule and uh, it may be something um. like from few hours to few weeks and um, Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, it's difficult to say. Thank you. Thank you, Milena. We don't have uh, time. So, yeah. Uh, thank you all for joining this session. I encourage you to uh, continue discussion on the either on community board or on the chat itself for the session. So, yeah, thanks again for attending. Thank and you. yeah, have a nice day and yeah, enjoy the rest of the, the meeting. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.